So we're coming up to a new tax year. Ah, I know. I An know. Another one, another one passing. Yeah, so, it does. Crazy, isn't it, how quickly yeah. it all goes. So let's just talk through, um, you know, the changes that are upcoming yeah. um, and what to be aware of with the tax year end processes and what to look out for in preparation for the new tax year. Um, firstly, let's start with tax codes. Obviously, the, the code is remaining the same, 1257L. Yeah. Um, so there's no change to, to the bandings there. Um, basic rate uh, is remaining the same. Um, and, and as well as the higher rate, um, the, the additional rate, um, higher rate is, is coming down. Um, so for the 45% um, taxpayers, it's reducing from 150,000 down to uh, just over 125,000, um, which is obviously reduces the, uh, the personal allowance um, for, for employees that earn over um, a hundred thousand. So for every one pound above a hundred thousand, they are uh, they. Um, sorry, uh, for every two thousand above the um, the hundred thousand that they earn, their personal allowance will drop by a pound. Um, so, for example, um, if someone is earning one hundred two thousand, their code is reduced by one to one five. Two, uh, sorry, one two five six L. Um, so that's that's the tax changes um, in respect of NI. Um, obviously, we've had a fair few changes throughout this year. Oh, um, yeah. Obviously, the, the health and social care levy came in and then went back out. Oh, it's like doing the okie kokie, it, isn't it's it? It's very much like the okie kokie. So <laughs> um, that's been removed from the new tax year as things stand. Um, as to whether that's going to change again, we'll have to wait and see. Um, the the rates are obviously remaining the same at twelve percent and, and thirteen point eight, um, with with the health, health and social care levy removed. Yeah, um, it was obviously going. It was included with NI throughout this year. Yeah, um, and originally was, it was going to be shown as a separate exactly. national insurance yeah. contribution on your pay slip. Yeah. And we're the, so the first part of the year, we had to have a little message on your payslip to say, this is including your health and social, health and social? Health yeah. And, yeah. Health and social care, yeah. Yeah. And um, then then that got removed part yeah. way through the year. And then we had our rates all changed, honestly. Yeah. People say, what's the national insurance list? I have no clue. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let I have me to look check it, it every time. Every it's time. Never, never, yeah, every never changed time. so much yeah. throughout a year, has it? I so know. it's definitely been one of one of those years. Yeah. Um, the the bands obviously remaining the same um, for the new tax year in terms of it increased up into the to match the personal allowance for tax. Yeah. As as twelve thousand um, five hundred seventy. Right. So it's part way through the year. Part way through the year. That was well. November, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, that's remaining throughout the next yeah. tax year yeah. for 23, yeah. 24. So that's you know a benefit to employees yeah. that they're not going to be paying higher national yeah. insurance from the new year, which was potential. See, that's another reason. I know we've we've talked before in our podcast about helping our employ our clients out, but we always offer the health check, and this is the kind of thing because when you're processing your payroll yourself. Um, you've got to have a bit of understanding of what's going on yeah. behind the scenes and not just accepting that your payroll software is doing it right. Yeah. That's why you could always give us a shout to come out and make sure everything's do doing exactly. as it should do. Exactly. We're always more than happy to come out and do a bit of a health check on how your payroll software is working, how your understanding of operating payroll is. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the start or end of a tax year, is always a good time to. Pick it up, is. It is a good. Health check. Yeah. Before RTI, that's something that I would be involved in a lot because our clients would be quite happy to be processing the payroll throughout the year. They would get to year end because they only do it once a year. How do I do the year end? Can you come out and give me a hand? And I would do the year end. I would then make sure that their tax codes were all correct and set up for the new tax year make sure that if anybody was on student loan, that they were on student loan and explain things where if they've had, I've had an attack from the burning, I don't know what to do with this. Talk them through what they have to do with that. 
with RTI, we've kind of that in that that kind of like instruction from the client has gone because everything gets sent every yeah. time a payroll is processed. Yeah. But having said that, we we still offer that service yeah. if you if needed. And uh, everyone expects HMRC to pick up on everything because it's submitted on a regular basis, but that isn't always the case. Well, you had one the other day, didn't it's, you? It's, it's where you had the wrong the wrong tax code yeah. being issued on somebody who was a high earner yeah. and potentially he's, could end he, up having... He's underpaying tax on yeah. a regular basis because yeah. he was having, you know, just 20% tax and he's a higher rate taxpayer. So he should and have been on... And this tax code came you know, from HMRC. Exactly. So, you know, they don't always get everything right. So it's, it's worthwhile having these checks in place yeah. to ensure that, you know, we can help, you know, if there's anything that doesn't look right, we can point you in the right direction of how to fix it and yeah. and, and help you, you know, ensure yeah. that employees are not having these issues going forward because yeah. this this was just a simple request that came through to us by email and, you know, we looked into it and were a bit unsure of and yeah. gave them the advice that they yeah. needed and, and yeah. they've dealt with it. Absolutely. Internally, so. and, and in most cases, we have it with employee, our clients will say, my employee is saying that they're not being taxed properly. We download when we're, pro, we're in our payroll service, the tax codes directly from HMRC onto our payroll software. We can act for our clients where we've got a 64-8 set up. But unfortunately, we can't act for our employees because it's their business. We are told this is their tax code. If the employee doesn't agree with it, our advice is always contact HMRC, at which point, if it's wrong, HMRC will then issue a corrected tax code. And at the next pay period, pay point, we can then download the new tax. Yeah. And at which point their tax will be yeah. adjusted, either refunded or maybe even have to pay more tax yeah. dependent. We can certainly advise them on how to deal with yeah. the conversation with HMRC. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we just can't deal yeah. with that conversation. Yeah. No. Just, no. just purely based on the fact. We get involved with universal credit as well, don't yeah. we? Where we've yeah, there's got, issues you know, with that. And, and that's, oh, that's a, a nightmare, and it's such a shame for these people mm. who have to have universal credit um, in order to you know, meet their daily costs. Yeah. And payroll, if not operated properly, can really mess up their benefits. Yeah. And again, yeah. that's something that it's we It's a do. difficult conversation to have with... An yeah. employee or an employer that's having to deal with that, yeah. you know, a disgruntled employee on that yeah. basis, yeah. because you know it's affecting their livelihoods, it is. and yeah. you know, and, and you don't want that for your employees, no, or, or anyone. So, no. No. you know, from our perspective, we look to help and and yeah. make sure that operating it, yeah, is Absolutely. is is correct, so that we can, yeah, prevent any issues like that. Happening. Yeah, yeah. So what else is new? So we've got the national, the, we've got new. National minimum wage rates were above ten pounds. I know, and there's some big increases this year. Yeah. So we're looking at you know around ten percent mark on all all levels. So we've got the apprentice rate from four eighty one up to five twenty eight. That's nine point eight percent increase. Yeah. Um, for eighteen to twenties, we've got from six eighty three to seven forty nine, a nine point seven percent increase. Uh, twenty one and twenty two. A 918 to 1018, which is our biggest, 10.9 percent, and uh, over 23s, which um, is of course the national living wage, uh, from nine pound fifty to 10.42, which is a, a 9.7 percent increase again. So it makes you wonder where they get these at 10.42. Yeah, I know. Why 10.42? Why not 10.45? Mm. And why 10 such 50? odd percentages? Yeah. You know, why why where why not get... just 10 percent across the board? Why exactly. why 9.7? Obviously, they've got their formula. Mm. Yeah, to work exactly. It all out, yeah. But yeah, odd. I can see they're trying to slowly bridge the gap between your 21s and and over yeah. 23s because yeah. that's you know a bigger gap. A, a bigger percentage for yeah. the 21s and 22s and yeah. I know there's been a lot of argument across that and um, and I'm, I'm aware of payroll professionals backing the the alignment of those age, age yeah. rates yeah um, because you know what's what is the difference nowadays for people over 21 to people over 23 there's very little yeah. people do 
you know. They're, they're doing the same job. Exactly. They're doing the same job and it's why yeah. are they being paid for? Exactly. You can understand. Yeah, exactly. You can understand. Totally. At that point, generally, you've completed yeah. your training as such, yeah. haven't you, well, in employment. So, yeah. Or they've been through university yeah. and, yeah. and, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, side. the other thing we've got to also sort of be aware of is the apprenticeship rate and the fact that, you know, just because they're training, they shouldn't just be on the apprenticeship rate there's certain rules behind that yes you know that that the, if not there they've done if they're at, oh, 19 and over and they've done more than 12 months then they should be on their age related national minimum wage rate not the lower apprenticeship wage rate yeah. and that is something that people fall down over yeah. unfortunately yeah. and you've got to be careful of yeah there's a pitfall so, yeah um, so we've got some new statutory payments um, for the new year, uh, increased amounts, um, which does tend to apply every year. But there's, there's, uh, there's definitely a, a big jump in, in the SSP rate specifically, um, but as well as uh, maternity and uh, paternity adoption rates. There's, there's big increases across that board. So we're looking at um, the the SSP rate from 99.35 to 109.40, which is is massive compared to previous years where we were looking at one or two pounds yeah. increase for yeah. the last you know two or three years yeah in my memory and yeah. and this one's jumping up you know 10 pounds yeah a week is is considerable in, in comparison to previous yes um maternity uh, paternity and adoption rates you're looking at 156.66 to 172.48 so again yeah. another over 10 percent increase so it's it's sizable and yeah. hopefully that can benefit those that are in that position. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously that is um, the first six weeks of their yeah. maternity. They it's... would get paid 90% um, of their average weekly rate, Yes, which yeah. is always a funny way of working it out. But yeah. again, when you're doing that, you have to think, well, I'd say as a, if they had pay increase, pay increase yeah. since their average because you've got to think mm. of all of that the tribunals have gone through that have overruled the old way of doing it and so you've got to very carefully think about when you're when you're working out somebody's maternity yes. pay yeah. and take into lots of consideration again don't just press the button on your computer and think oh that's what it is yeah yeah there's definitely areas where like you said the tribunals the, the employment law has taken precedent yeah. across you know the whole of Europe, and we've just got to be wary of those rules and regulations yeah. that need to be followed. And that's yeah. definitely an area that we can help Holiday with, isn't well. it? Holiday yeah. is another one. I digress from you know because this came in in 2020 when we were absolutely thinking of COVID and furlough calculations and all the rest of it. But we've got the 52 week average. Yeah. We've got to think about with working out holiday pay, and uh, yeah, there's all sorts of different ways of, of, of calculating holiday, but most importantly, you've got to make sure that your employee isn't being shortchanged because they're on holiday. Yeah. Again, this is all brought in because of tribunals going through and um, the employee is winning. And yeah. it's, you've just, again, another reason for health checks, if, yeah. you, if required, if needed, or just a phone call to say, am I doing this right? Yeah. So, yeah. Does lead back to record keeping again, doesn't oh, it? Certainly with the yeah. fifty-two week average, it's yeah. it's not the easiest way of calculating holiday. No. We we you know we're experiencing it, but even from time to time we have the difficulties of it, depending yeah. on the records that are kept and yeah. and what's given to us by the employers and the clients. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We're pay we're processing a payroll for um, clients, and we get the information on a monthly basis, and then they say, "What's their holiday?" Well. We need you to tell me what they've worked on a weekly basis in order for us to work out what their 52 week average because in that month they might have only worked two weeks, yeah. And you don't include weeks where they don't work, yeah. In the exactly. you go back 104 full paid so that you get 52 full paid weeks in order to work out what the average is. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they don't make it easy, do they? No, us exactly. payroll professionals, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the crystal ball is yeah. often required yeah yeah so 
then, and then the employment allowance, what's yeah. happening with that? So that's uh, remaining the same, um, £5,000 to cover the employer's national insurance um, for, for clients or for companies that aren't linked, that don't um, have any state aid um, and that are have have employees in effect so they're not sole director payroll so mm -hmm. those are the, the three areas that we'd look to review um, yeah. Any, yeah. any state aid should generally be um, detailed clearly on on information of yeah. which it's received and there's only specific areas to which state aid applies and and funding amounts as well so it's, those areas are, are detailed um, and we can we can certainly help in advising on that so. yeah and then you've got the small employers relief that's not changed for ages no it? no it hasn't no it's so it's okay for for years now it has yeah I'm, i don't remember the last time it changed if no. i'm being perfectly honest no. so yeah if you're if your gross national insurance is below forty five thousand, then you can claim additional compensation on your recovery such as maternity paternity adoption etc yeah. all of those it's from 92 so for any that uh, national insurance is above 45,000, uh, it's 92% reclaimed from the government, which is claimed through PAYE. Yeah. Um, and then any um, below that, they can claim 103% back, which is in effect a benefit to the yeah. employer for yeah. for any of their you know, staff that go off on, on those leaves. Yeah. Um, and it can obviously be put towards cover yeah. in effect if, Again, if, uh, if cover is required. A manual calculation your software yeah. is not going to just know no. that. You have to yeah. put a bit of thought into that yeah. and make sure the relevant boxes within the software are ticked or unticked. Yes, exactly. Make sure you're exactly. doing it right. And this time of year is vital because this is obviously the key points of checking it in the turnover of the tax year. So between yeah. you know March and April, when you yeah. close off one tax year and you open the next, just make sure you're completing these checks. Yeah. And if you're unsure, you know where we are. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, think, I, I think, think I think we've covered think everything there. Pretty much covered it. I'm sure there's other things that maybe people might be yeah. wanting to ask. Well, we're here. Yeah. We're yeah. here. Top Westcott's are here. Um, to contact either myself or Jake. Um, and you can phone any number and you'll be put through to us. Uh, so that's, that's us signing off. Great. Thank you.